Yeah. My last name is pronounced Kikla. I know. <laughs> oh Don't worry about it. I have to write that down because I'm going to like mess that up every time I say it again. Kik Kikla? Kikla, yeah, like a perfume. Like, like, yeah. like, like cake that you eat, cake la. Yeah. It's almost like a Chinese person going cake la. <laughs> Hello, people. I am Javi Koei. Joining us is Achara Kirk Hello. and. Oh, sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You're I'm so like, excited. So come excited. down. Come okay, down. Okay. <laughs> Hello, people. I'm Javi Koei. Joining us is Achara Kirk. Hi. And Kalki Kekla. Yay! Yeah. Yes! Thank you, Debbie. How are, how are you I'm doing? Great. I'm good. It's yeah. your, you know, achar means pickle, right? In yes. Hindi. Is it named after pickle or? No, are so. You, you get yourself she, in a she, pickle. When she came out of her mom's stomach, she looked like, she looked all green and pruney. <laughs> like, a, like a pickle. So I'm half Thai and achara means something like angel or something like that. My mom wanted me to be called Acharya, which means genius for a boy. But I right. guess girls don't get to be geniuses. Girls don't, oh, yeah. Wow. So, wow. yeah. Well, <laughs> angel genius. And something like, like that. Both, both genders. Yeah, both. Yeah. <laughs> all, all have to be both genders these days. That seems to be the case. Exactly. Like we have to do everything. We have to do everything, yeah. <laughs> How often do people come up to you and go, you made me cry in margarita with a straw? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, people do cry, but they also feel really happy in the film. Yeah. They're like, oh, I feel so good after watching it. So I think people want to cry. You know, I think it's like a good cry kind of film. When you had that moment when you gave the cassette to be played, the, the, the music that yeah. your mom liked, yeah. I literally had to pause the movie because I started sobbing. Like, I'm not, like, she was next to me, yeah. I just completely broke down, and I haven't broken down like that in a movie ever. It's, it's also because, like, my dad passed away, like, so it was, like, yeah. tapping into that. Yeah, I think a lot of people associate with that, because actually my director's uh, mother passed away um, mm. when she was quite young. So she, had, that was very autobiographical biographical yeah. in the film. Did you watch a lot of uh, My Left Foot before doing that movie? I did. <laughs> I mean, actually, that was the one film I had already seen and I knew about cerebral palsy. That was the only reason I had even heard the term cere cerebral palsy. Otherwise, okay. I didn't know about the disability. So um, I watched a bunch of other films. There was one called Oasis. I remember that was a Korean film. It's pretty good. Oh, okay. And then there were a bunch of documentaries on it as well, um, especially on sex and disability. In addition to watching films like that, like wh what else did you do for your research for that role? Oh my God, I was there for six months. So basically me and Shonali, my director, we decided that we will not do this film if it doesn't work in the sense that even after six months of work, if we felt it wasn't convincing, we'll drop it. But the condition was we'll spend six months doing just this, preparing for this. So she didn't let me do any other work. And she introduced me, the, the biggest thing she did for me was introduce me to Malini Chib, who's her cousin, who's kind of also um, the inspiration for the film. And she has cerebral palsy. So Malini let me live with her. I went to her place of work, which is the Center for Disability called ADAPT all disabled, able people together. So I spent all my time there living with her, being with her, wheeling down the corridors on wheelchairs with her. When I wasn't able to be with Malini at home, I would spend every day spending a couple of hours just staying in character. And actually it was something that Malini told me that made me do it, which was that at the end of one of our days where we had been rehearsing and talking and stuff, I got off my wheelchair and stood up to go home. And she said, see, at the end of your day, you can do that. Oh, Jesus. Oh, my God, yeah. <laughs> that really hit me hard. And that's when I was like, I'm going to stay in this wheelchair for the entire process of the shoot. I mean, I didn't stay for the six months that I was preparing. I didn't. But once I was on set, I stayed, I stayed in character from when I got there in the morning till at night. Oh, um, okay. Yeah, I couldn't do it at night and all that because of also practical reasons where we, we were staying in places which weren't always disability friendly. It was a intense process. And actually what happens when you work for six months, please stop me if I'm talking to you. No, 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 I, I like you yeah, on all yeah, this yeah. stuff. It's crazy. <laughs> it's really interesting. <laughs> yeah, when you work for six months on something, you start having a body memory. You're, it's like a violin player, right? If they're mm -hmm. rehearsing the same piece every day, 
after a while, they're not reading the music or remembering the piece. The body remembers it on its own. So, you, you know, I have this also with rehearsing for play. If I haven't done it in like a year and come back to it, if I stand in the place where I was or in the position, I start remember my body remembers it, but and then the lines come out. So in the same way, when you're doing this every day, you start, your body do, does it. You don't think that I have to pick up my drink like this, you know? Mm -hmm. So much so that after I finished the film, I would still sometimes do it. When I went to a bar and I was getting my beer, I was picking up my <laughs> <laughs> like, okay. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, I, I heard Daniel Day Lewis. Whenever he would finish a role, he'd have to go to therapy to work himself out of that character. Like, oh, yeah. he, like he was dealing with his character from There Will Be Blood for like a year. Wow, he's so good in yeah. that. Yeah. He's, I mean, he's my in, like I love everything he does, and and I've always followed his work. And he's another level of uh, acting. And uh, you know, he prepares for like a year or two years sometimes for a role. I would love to see his reaction to Margarita with a straw. Like, <laughs> I would love to see what he says. Because that was the very first trailer I saw of yours. And I was convinced. I was, because like when I was watching, I'm like, I think that, this, like, I'm convinced that this is a real person with cerebral palsy. Like, I couldn't believe, yeah. like, it, it was all acting. That was crazy. We watched A Death in the Gunge sometime back. Yes. yes. I called me a what? A slag. No, was it a slag? What was it you called me? I said that? Yeah. Oh, shit. Uh, I don't even remember that. No, but for me, yeah, watching that... Go ahead. Skanky, skanky is the word you use. <laughs> <laughs> yes, skanky Mimi. Um, yes. When I, yeah. when I watched that film, it, it's See? like, I, overall, I wasn't, like, in love with the movie, but yeah. I was, like, so happy with your performance, yeah. especially knowing, like... Comparing it to Margarita, Margarita with a straw and all that stuff, like, you were the standout thing for me. Watching that oh. film, yeah. I don't mean this to just be compliments. Like, <laughs> <laughs> it's hard to play a bitch, actually. Really? So, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I should it should come to me easily. I know. No. But we both do it really <laughs> well in real life all the time. <laughs> I just find like it, it's hard to play a, this so-called bitch character without it becoming like a stereotype of a bitch. You know, like to make her also real and have reasons for being that way she is bullied by somebody so she bullies in return you know like yeah. bullied by um uh, the vikram character the older ma man who's married yeah. you know yeah. and yeah. so in, she bullies this little kid and yeah it's like a cycle that they're all in i was just gonna ask like how did aib approach you for um was it rape it's not your fault yeah See, i know them I've seen their performance. I love, I love their stuff, and so I knew them all. When they messaged me, I think it was Tanmay Bhatt who messaged me and said, uh, "I want to do something with you." And I was remember I was really busy with work, and I immediately outright said, "No, no, I can't do it right now. You come back to me next month or whatever it is." He said, "Fine, I'm just sending you the script anyway." I and I read the script. And I'm like, "Okay." <laughs> Two hours between breakfast and uh, my first shoot, so we'll do it here. And that's kind of how it happened. It literally happened in two hours. We had no time, uh, but we did it. It was, it was awesome. Yeah, yeah. He's, he's super nice. He's, yeah, he's really fun, and they're all really, really fun. And, you know, they gave me a, a, a one rupee check for it, which is <laughs> now pasted on my wall here somewhere if I, if I show you. you was that like a technicality that they had to pay you for it? Or it was just a, a joke. I see it. I see it. Oh my gosh. <laughs> um, that was, uh, I guess, yeah, that was just their joke, of course. And they, they gave me lots of books because they couldn't afford to pay me. So I have a bunch of books from them. So I noticed, like, in addition to uh, the AIB video, Rape, It's Not Your Fault, you also were in Man's World. And then even in the trailer for Ribbon, which I loved, even in that movie, there seems to be a lot of talk about, you know, like gender inequality and and right. all of that. So it yeah. seems like it's an issue that's really close to your heart. Can you talk yeah, more about being that? A woman, being a woman, it's in my best interest to like, you know, <laughs> look out for our rights um, yeah. and equal partners in this world. And I honestly think the world would be a better place if there was equality, just because we also bring a different element, which complement guys. I don't think it's a competition between men and women, you know, and I yeah. think that's the, the idea of, of 
people thinking that, I don't know, it's going to threaten a man's world. I think the idea is that we have to find, both of us have to like be able to help each other and share share the burdens, uh, you know, like, like we are now getting spaces in offices and work, but we still are mostly doing all the domestic stuff. At least in India, that's still very much the case. Mm-hmm. Men don't really take part in the domestic part of life. Mm-hmm. And I think it like if bringing up a child have paternity leave as well as maternity leave like there is a certain time where a mother has to be with the child and then a father can also be with the child you know every time uh we do a video that comments on equality or something like a woman getting raped or something like that the very first thing that happens every time in the comments is guys going there's a select number of guys that go you know there are women who fake it and it's like yeah. immediately and i'm like ah good oh, horrible. you know horrible. I don't know what it's going to take, but it's a whole mentality change that needs to happen. Did you see Wonder Woman? I did. I did see Wonder Woman. Yeah. How'd you feel about it? I mean, I enjoyed the film. I'm not aware. Is it like, has it been called a feminist film? It's considered. Yeah, I think it's very much so. Just because of like, you know, portraying the strong female character who's who's quite like well-rounded, you know, she's, she's sensitive, she's strong, she's... She's all the things. Even basically. little, even little things like when you see the when you see her land and you see like a little jiggle in her leg, that's something. Yeah. That's something nuanced that you would never see otherwise. Yeah. It's, right. Right. It's, yeah, a lot of things. Yeah, yeah, I totally enjoyed the film. I had a great time watching it. I, but I it wouldn't have occurred to me at all that it was a feminist film. For me, it's like I feel like the question of gender. It, we need to understand that we are human beings before we're a gender. Right. You know, mm-hmm. I feel. Again, we're awarding achievement to a woman who does something. or uh, And I, I, I want to live in a world where we no longer need to be like Wonder Women or Super Women in order to be applauded. Like, we should just be allowed to have a normal life yeah. and just be allowed to live safely and uh, with the right amount of, like... I mean, when I talk about, like, payroll, for example, if people are are getting the same payroll, they're going to also have a lot of the same powers in today's, you know. So it's just that for me, equality. Mm -hmm. So when does Ribbon come out? Reborn comes out on the 3rd of November. Okay, that's really soon. And then uh, Gia Gia and Gia? Yeah, Gia Gia comes out on the 27th of this month. So yeah, just one week before. You're a busy, busy body. <laughs> so, this 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 year has been a bunch of releases. Last year I had none, I think, or I don't know. But yeah, it happens like that. Feast or famine. What was it like working with Sumit? Sumit! <laughs> <laughs> that's that's literally like what happens anytime like we talk about Sumit. We're just like, Sumit! He just puts uh, a smile on your face. <laughs> I love Sumit. He's great. You know, he he's so calm. Which is the opposite of me. I'm like, let's rehearse 20 times. Let's do it again. Oh, yeah, but what about this? What about that? You know, I'm like buzzing around like that. And he's like, yeah, what do you want to have lunch? <laughs> like, oh, yeah, that's a good idea. We should eat somewhere in the middle of all this. And he's just, uh, he's, he also uh, is very good with dialogue, right? He's good at writing because he's a writer as well. So he was always coming up with some cool lines because a lot of ribbon is improvised. Although we had a scene, uh, we had a script. Uh, we would just read the scene once, and then we would leave the script and do it in our own way. And things would obviously build in in some way or the other. It would go here and there. Um, so we would rehearse it a few times until we got all the elements that we needed, and then do it. So in that, there was improvising, and and with the improvising, he'd come up with lines which I stole some of the, those lines. Uh, <laughs> plus, he would correct my Hindi, my keys and cars, because when I'm improvising, I I don't get my genders right. In Hindi, we have genders, mm-hmm. key and car and stuff. So I always get those wrong. I noticed in the commercial that there was a lot of long unedited takes was that different for you like having those kind of long because i know like normally you know you've got a lot of angles and whatnot in the trailer yeah Yeah, in the trailer yeah yeah that was one of the things that raki was very keen on the director she's a big fan of the darden brothers these belgian filmmakers they have this tendency of shooting these long shots and what happens or the idea of it i guess is that you kind of are a little bit on the outside looking in on a conversation so the camera never has a close-up and she also said something that it was interesting. She said that when you have a close-up, you kind of manipulate the emotions of the audience. Yeah. And you're making them feel something. Whereas when you just let the camera follow, 
they're just getting a very real uh, feeling of, of actually being there in this situation. Almost like intruding on a person. Did, did you ever find that like, <clears throat> because of those long takes, it got so intense that you needed to take moments where you had to like decompress from the like emotional height of the scene? Yeah, there were a lot of challenges, especially because we're working with a, a three-year-old. Kiara was the little girl playing um, my three-year-old. And she has a lot of acting to do. So when you're working with a kid, I, I remember this one shot, we had also had a really long day and we're all in the car, Sumit, me and Kiara. And she was really tired by this point. She just wanted to go home. She was actually supposed to walk with us, but she was so tired that I decided to carry her. So she was leaning on my shoulder. I was carrying her. We get out of the car. I get a phone call. Uh, I can't pick it up because I'm carrying her. So Sumit picks it up. It's my mother. We tell, we, I tell him, don't answer. He puts the phone back in my bag. He calls the lift. We all get into the lift. We go up get out of the lift, go into the house. We go and put through the house to the bedroom, put uh, her to sleep, take off her shoes, come back out. I'd go uh, to the living room, uh, open the window, try to light a cigarette, can't manage to light it. Sumit takes the lighter, lights it for me, and we break down. So it's like, it's like a really long shot. And a lo technically uh -huh. difficult. I mean, the cameraman Vikram was also amazing for being able to follow us. So when you're doing that, you're, you know, I, I think, I think that Rakhi and me cried when we got the, that scene, just out of happiness, out of sheer like, oh, we did it. You know, <laughs> every time we almost got there, Kara would just look up. You know, oh. she would be sleeping on my shoulder and she'd be like, "Are we done yet?" <laughs> and we're like, "Oh shit, we gotta go back." So you know, it was. Yeah, it was really tough to get that shot, but it's beautiful in the film. I'm really excited to watch it because of those long takes, because I don't see too many movies that are bold like that. Because it was interesting, like you just said, where it feels like you're there because it's not cutting. It feels like you're yeah. part of it. Is there anything you ever find like in your bios that you're like, that's not true, why do they keep saying that about me? <laughs> <laughs> Just just before, just before starting this, we were reading a little bit, and I saw the same thing again that said like your parents were hippies and they moved to India. They My parents hate that they're called hippies. <laughs> How can they do this to us? We are not. We are dignified people. <laughs> you know, we have come a very long way since then. We have done so much in life. Uh, you make us sound like we sit in the jungle doing nothing. Uh, so. Yeah, they're not very happy with the hippie term. <laughs> There's one big thing, which is that my I keep getting wished on the 9th of January. My birthday is on the 10th of January, but I think it's on Wikipedia or something that it's on the 9th. It's on the, yeah, I checked Wikipedia. Yeah. It's the 10th. You have the same birthday as one of my friends. Oh, so, really? Well, yeah. I must have changed it because for every year I would get like tons of wishes on the 9th and I'd be like, guys, can you all wish me again tomorrow? Yeah. <laughs> but no, other than that, not much. I mean, of course, there's always rumors and headlines about random things. Every time I go out with a guy, I must be dating him. Um, oh yeah, you can't just be friends, right? Yeah. And you have to have a, a cat fight with every actress you work with. One of the things it mentioned was that you had a somewhat of a reluctance uh, uh, to working in Mumbai again because you weren't sure if you'd be, or no, no, it was specifically about doing a Hindi film. You weren't sure how you'd be accepted. Did you find that you were like afraid that India might not accept you because you're not like you're not Indian? No, the thing is, I just didn't have any expectations when I came here because I mean, I, I grew up in South India and I feel very much Indian. Yeah. But when I came to Bollywood, I, I wasn't following Bollywood films. I didn't know much about it. And I came here to do theater. I joined a theater company with Atul Kumar, who is this theater director here and so I, I knew that I needed see you you can't survive on theater here it's really difficult so I was doing ads I was every day doing some audition or the other so I knew I needed to make money in some way and it's not that I, I was like snobbish about Bollywood or I didn't want to be in it because it wasn't that it was just that I was like you know I'm white-skinned I don't speak good Hindi I don't dance what can I ever do except maybe the like foreigner like you know jealous chick in the corner or something <laughs> so yeah, I didn't have much expectation for myself in Bollywood I thought yes every every actor you know has the dream of wanting to be on the big screen and I definitely wanted to do independent cinema and, and 
do two things, but I didn't have that expectation for obvious reasons. It, it didn't stop me from auditioning for everything, though. I audition for every like I would have a bag which had like air hostess outfit and uh, girl next door outfit and sexy vamp outfit <laughs> and I would be going from one audition to the next we have obviously haven't seen every film that's in your filmography but um, is there at any point you think that you would go and do a Bollywood film like with the singing and the dancing and all that stuff well I think Gia Gia is the closest to that because I have a full on like dance number in it called Naj Basanti Naj and that was a big challenge for me. I practiced my pelvic thrust for a long time <laughs> <laughs> and it has all these like one liners, you know, like it's a very typical Bollywood thing that you have these like comic one liners that come every like five minutes in the in the movie. So I think Georgia is probably the closest I've gotten there. But again, it's, it's not your run of the mill Bollywood film. I, I don't know. Nowadays, Bollywood is so many things as well. I think there are some really good Bollywood films out there. I feel like Zoya Akhtar, who I worked with with Zindagi Namalegi, her film Dil Dadakne Do, for example, you know, are, are still very larger than life, but are talking about a certain kind of real world. It's not everybody's world, but that world exists, you know? Yeah. yeah. So it's relatable. I just look for that. And definitely, if I, it's in my favor to do a commercial film because more people will watch it and then more people will come see my little films and, you know, it's all wonderful. So I would love to. It's just I, script comes first, belie believability comes first, I guess. I was just going to ask, because you've done so many interesting characters throughout your career. What, what's your process for choosing a project to work on or do you have a process at all? It actually is many things at different times of my life. Of course... Can I do the character? Will I be able to pull this off? And will I make it believable and real somehow, even if it is a comic character or larger than life? Or find that thing which makes the character real is important. And the script has to be something that I read in one go, usually. If I have to stop and have a cup of coffee or check my phone and brain, then I am not, not doing very well as a script. Right. And when I finish the script, I need to Google the subject immediately. That's a good sign. Because then I'm like, oh, I want to know more about this. What are people with split personalities like? and Or whatever it might be, you know? Yeah. So that's really important. Uh, and, and then apart from that, so it's just very practical things. Like, have I done this before? Am I repeating myself? Am I slotting myself again? Or um, am I getting paid for this? <laughs> do, I, do I love it enough that I'm not getting paid? Or... Or, oh my God, am I getting paid so much that it doesn't matter that I'm not loving it so much? Uh, you know, so those those things that come up, my own thing is to break my own stereotypes. I think you keep getting slotted yeah. after each film. So breaking that and pushing myself in directions which might scare me a little bit. How is it watching yourself? Oh, it's so horrible. The first time... I, yeah, first time I watch a film of mine, I, I can't watch the film. I'm just watching myself. I'm like, oh, God, what was I thinking? What was I? I should have done this. And, oh, my teeth are so big. And, you know, oh. <laughs> so the first time, forget it. But I have to watch a film twice uh -huh. of my own. First time just to criticize myself and all of that. And the second time to see if the film is nice and watch, enjoy the film. <laughs> 